All right, what's going on, guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's gonna be doing another Walking Dead video for today, leading up to the return for the second half of The Walking Dead season 10. And this one, we're gonna give our thoughts on The Walking Dead season 10's finale being confirmed to be a cliffhanger. Could we see the Commonwealth appear? Okay, and I'll put the link in the description so you guys can check this one out from comicbook.com uh, where they have an interview with Angela Kang about how The Walking Dead Season 10 is going to end off and it looks like it's going to end with a cliffhanger based on what she says. So I'm just wondering if uh, we think we might see the Commonwealth sort of come in as we know that Maggie's going to be returning. So how is that going to kind of fit in with everything else? Also, we know that the CRM is going to be a separate uh, institution or separate, um, you know, a uh, group or, or maybe series of groups, maybe a few groups, uh, which is going to be different from the Commonwealth in the TV series universe. So they're going to have the Commonwealth, which it sounds like will be what Maggie's into now, and then uh, maybe the CRM, which is a completely different section. But we'll see how World Beyond fits in with that too, and if that's the CRM, um, or just how the whole Georgie thing with Maggie will kind of fit in there there as well. So it says, when The Walking Dead airs its uh, season 10 finale in April, the half season ends with a cliffhanger leading up to season 11. Showrunner Angela Kang won't give away the magnitude of the coming cliffhanger. Audiences uh, were left on the hook for months when Negan picked an unidentified victim in the season six finale, while a smaller cliffhanger ended season nine when Ezekiel, uh, using the long range uh, radio constructed by Eugene, uh, unknowingly made contact with an outside community as part of a storyline still unfolding in season 10 and beyond. Uh, but there will be more unanswered questions pushing into the 11th season now in the works. So it says, quote, uh, I'll just say that there's some big stuff and there is a cliffhanger. Without getting into what exactly that is, Kang told Entertainment Weekly, but I think hopefully it will be exciting. <laughs> so um, what will we come to expect from Walking Dead after all these years? You know, <laughs> another cliffhanger for the finale for season 10? Well, you know, uh, again, like, yeah, what, what will we come to expect? You know, it's it's something that you know, Walking Dead. Maybe it's maybe it's the thing Walking Dead does best is they have the best, you know, the best cliffhangers of any series. I mean, you think of the season six finale, like they mentioned, but even in the mid-season finales, them being stuck in the cave is kind of a cliffhanger in a way. Uh, there was the uh, the sewer when they were trapped in in there with uh, with Carl and all that, and like Ninja Turtles in there. <laughs> and, well, sad, pretty sad Ninja Turtles if that's the case. And you know, they've done lots of this stuff, right? You know, and even even the whole night season sort of ended with the uh, the snow episode and it was you know in the middle of the whisper uh, uh you know kind of getting started off with the whisper war so um you know even that was sort of a cliffhanger in some ways with the pike scene before and everything so sort of a cliffhanger but it sounds like this one will be kind of a deliberate maybe season nine or, or season six-esque uh finale type of cliffhanger for the season but we'll see i mean you know, I was thinking when I read it, like, okay, it'll probably be something with maybe the Commonwealth just appearing, them just getting to see it, something like this, and then they'll kind of end the season off at that point. I mean, it makes sense for the new cliffhangers. You want people to come back the next year. That's kind of the purpose. You want to build anticipation for that and keep people excited. So that's kind of what you do. So, you know, it makes sense. It's cool. And uh, I think we might see it. I mean, you know, the Whispers, we know the Whisper War is going to be coming on pretty soon. Uh, they have gotten good usage out of the, uh, the Whispers already because they came in after Rick left with with Jesus in the uh, the sixth episode right when they first kind of appeared of season nine all the way up until now and we haven't even seen the deaths of uh, Alpha or Beta or even Gamma right you know it's another notable uh, whisper and then you got Negan in there so by the end of the season I, I would hope to think that the whispers will be most likely kind of resolved and we'll see something with the uh, with um, the Commonwealth sort of coming in but I guess it could be something like you know, a whisper heard kind of in one of the communities like Alexandria, uh, probably not the hilltop because that's, we already have seen the trailers for that. We know that that's going to be, uh, you know, there's going to be a war there, right? So it might be, maybe it'll be decimated in the process, that whole thing, they have to retreat, something like this. So I don't know, what do you guys think the cliffhanger will be? Do you think that they'll actually take the whispers and stretch them into the next season? Uh, you know, I know some people have said like if they, if they did that, people are going to kind of complain because it's like too long. You know, if the whispers aren't resolved by the end of season 10, it's, it's 
like they were there for too long. And that's one thing that we saw with uh, Negan and the Saviors is it felt like maybe all of Season 7, all of Season 8, and part of Season 6 there with the Saviors coming in was just like two and a half years. It was like too long for one set of villains or one group. So the Whispers, maybe two years or you know something like that. Maybe you guys would like a year and a half better and you'd hope to see some kind of cliffhanger with, with Maggie in, in, the, uh, in the finale or something and the Whispers be maybe mostly defeated but like a small group of whispers out there, uh, you know, somewhere. And then, because they don't want to go through the comic book content too fast, because then there's 11 and then uh, 12. And eventually at the end of season 12, apparently, if that report is true, the comic content will be just about uh, used up. And then we'll have to see if it gets a 13, greenlit for 13 or or not. So we'll see for that. The next one came in from Sinsin07, who says, uh, The Walking Dead. Uh, so this is for Judith's first appearance. So let's think about this. It showed Abraham and Rosita. Uh, this was after the uh, the comments about um, you know possibly Negan and uh, and Alpha getting it getting busy, right? <laughs> so, uh, but naked doing it. It showed Andrew grab Shane's junk. Oh yeah, that was funny. I remember that one. And we got to see Shane rip uh, out uh, Lori's uh, back in the woods in season one. Uh, so how bad could this be with Alpha uh, that it needs its own rating? Because the season premiere episode that we're going to see tomorrow night for premiere or well tonight for premiere uh or sunday night for the rest of us um you know it is going to be it's it's rated for sexual content so just a heads up for that guys that it is and uh so you know will we see some you know kind of <laughs> some more uh of that kind of stuff you know yeah it's gonna it could be fun we'll see we'll see what happens here you know junk grabbing uh, since it brings up but um Makes me think back to the uh, Shane and Laurie scene in the woods, which is in Guts, which is the second episode of The Walking Dead, I think. Yeah, it's in Guts because it's before Rick gets back. And Rick gets back and, or I mean, he finds the group first uh, in uh, Tell It to the Frogs, which I think is the third episode. So if in Guts, uh, Laurie and Shane do it for the last time, I think we are to assume, or we should probably that that's probably Judah's first appearance, uh, but it's in, you know, Shane's balls. <laughs> because uh, after that scene, Rick gets back, and Rick and Lori never, they never, or, or at least, you know, Rick knows that, uh, that uh, Judith is Shane's. So I think we are to assume that in a way, what, what cultures start off the counter, your age counter, at the time of... Uh, <laughs> Uh, being uh, conceived, is that the right word? Um, you know, so, you know, you watch back that scene, right, with Laurie and, uh, and Shane in the woods where he's, like, kind of chasing around stuff or she thinks it's a zombie and then it ends up being him. And uh, you could probably say that that, in a way, is Judith's first appearance. So she probably is actually a season one character just before she's actually, you know, <laughs> a, a, a character, right? And then, and then because then season three, she actually, you know, is born and everything. And then there's all that with Laurie and... Carl and Rick and everything like that. So I don't know. I just thought that was kind of funny and, and a funny way to think about it. It's like it's like she's sort of a season one character in a way, right? <laughs> so uh, then there is uh, so for since then, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing some of that stuff with Negan and Alva. It's going to be fun um, for sure. And so the Walking Dead attraction is closing at Universal Studios. And I, I should say too, it could have been one of the times before as well. But you know, I just think because they they showed it to us there. It's, if you want to think of it that way, to kind of fit it in, and then when Rick got back, they weren't doing it after, so Shane and, 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 and Lori weren't, and he knows it's not his, so it's like, yeah, it makes sense, right? It fits anyway. Uh, so <laughs> Walking Dead Attraction is unfortunately closing at Universal Studios, so just a heads up for that, guys, if any of you guys were thinking about maybe checking it out. I haven't personally ever gotten a chance to check out any of the Walking Dead attractions, you know, rides, things like this, you know. Uh, these type of uh, theme things. They look pretty cool. And, um, you know, that's kind of unfortunate that it's kind of shutting its doors and that in favor of something else, some other kind of attraction. Cause, but, you know, it all comes with demand. If people are not, you know, using the, the ride or whatever, or the, I guess maybe I shouldn't say ride, like, you know, the attraction, then uh, eventually they got to kind of, they got to kind of close it up. So that one's kind of sad, but, uh, oh, well, what can you do? You know, I'm sure there'll be, you know, other stuff. They got other stuff they're probably going to do anyway. So no big deal. Uh, Alexander Fleming, who said, Trav, grow up. If Negan gets raped by Alpha, then it's no laughing matter. Rape is a serious issue, not to be mocked. Just because it's Negan being raped, it doesn't make it okay. And, uh, yeah, you know, you're right. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and say, say that you're not right. Uh, yeah, it is a serious issue, right? You know, in, in, in real life, um, IRL. 
Um, I don't know why I laugh about it. I just think it's kind of kind of well. First of all, I laugh when Negan's when Negan's involved with things. I generally laugh to begin with. Uh, it's just kind of a, a starting reaction for me. But is it true that in real life that's not a laughing matter for um, if okay? So so for for women, if they're if they're art, um, then yeah, that's 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 no laughing matter at all. For men, it should be equivalent because we don't want to be sexist. So it should be exactly the same. That if they are, then it's just it's 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 weird though because if it's a guy, it's it's kind of like it's just it's just different in a way. But you know, if you deal with like if you're in this type of situation, let's say when you have you know a, a female who's a leader of a group like that who can pretty much do whatever she wants and everyone's terrified of her and everything then uh, it should be equivalent. But is it weird, psychologically, that because it's a man who's the victim, that, uh, that it's more that, okay, I'll say this for myself, is it doesn't feel as sensitive to it. Because it should, but it doesn't. Uh, that's just strange to me. You guys can leave comments about that one below. He's right. It isn't a laughing matter, if it happens for real, right? And it shouldn't matter the gender of the person who is, who is being, you know... <laughs> See, I did it again, right? Uh, but when it's a guy, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's weird. Like, it's kind of like, you know, for, for a girl to do it to a guy, it's, it's not impossible um, for that to happen. Like, even in, in real life, too, you could take a very, uh, let's say you take an extremely beta male, a very kind of wimpy male, and uh, or one that's drugged or one that, or, or if a girl's a gun or a knife or something like this, uh, or if it's just a tough chick who can beat, beat the guy down or something. Uh, and does it? It's like, yeah, it's just, it's just not, it's not something you you hear about. It's not something you think about from that perspective. It's usually the other way around. But you're absolutely right. It's a good point. And I wonder why it is that we don't think of it the same way. Uh, if it's if it's a different, uh, you know, for for the man as the victim. It's it's almost like society is kind of set up in such a way where we don't really allow men to be victims in a way. It's sort of like if they lose, we kind of look at them as um, as wimpy, and kind of kind of put them down, right? Which shouldn't be the case, but it's. Uh, I want to say that that's culturally kind of what we do, right? Uh, so it's, uh, I don't know, leave your comments below on that one. What do you guys think about that one? And uh, what are your thoughts? I mean, obviously, it is possible. Um, that's for sure, uh, you know. So, yeah, it's, I don't know. <laughs> you got me there, Alex. And you're right. Uh, you know, you're not wrong. I shouldn't laugh about it, but yeah, I don't know. Strange, right? It's uh, yeah, strange. Entertainment Mixing says, I believe Rick will live. So most people in the Will Rick Live or Die at the end of the trilogy said that they think that Rick is going to live and he's going to survive. And so, um, you know, I'm happy to see that, that most people would want him to. Uh, some people just said they didn't care at this point because uh, it has been a long time and we haven't seen too much of the movies. But I think people will start to care more once we get the trailer, once we start to see Andrew Lincoln getting ready again, I think a lot of people will come right back to it and be excited to see that again because you can't miss someone unless they leave for a while. When someone leaves for a while, then you can miss them. It's sort of like Daryl. You know, Daryl's always there, so you don't really miss Daryl because he's always right there, so you take him for granted. But once someone leaves, like Rick leaving, then afterwards you kind of kind of miss seeing him, and when he comes back, you're like, oh, it's so awesome to you can't miss me if I don't if I don't leave ever if, if you're not gone ever, right? So there's that. So I think we will see that. But most people, uh, you know, we're saying that like if you're gonna kill him off, you probably do it in the TV series, so they think he'll he'll survive into old age in in the movies there. Uh, and I guess we'll see if uh, we'll see if they end up being right. If the movies get done and everything the way I think they will, uh, they kind of have to do them now. Otherwise, it's like, you know, uh, it affects the whole property. So I, I think it'll get done. Uh, I just think it's taken longer than they thought because they have to sort the whole thing out. The second one probably won't take so long. The same with the third if they do all three. Lucas Bedford says, uh, still do the reviews on Sunday nights, Trev. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, most of you guys have said that, no, keep doing them on Sunday nights. Don't move the day to uh, uh, Friday nights or Saturday, you know, sometime do the review Sunday night. So that's what we're going to do. And uh, we'll just do that going forward. And, uh, you know, it's been a lot of years. So it makes sense that we stick to the same kind of schedule, right? Um, Jeremy Bennett uh, had an interesting one. He said, what if Rick kills Negan, just like he said he would, and Judith instantly stabs Rick to avenge Negan's death? Uh, in Rick's final breath, he tells Judith that he is her father. So <laughs> that's what it says, Jer Jeremy wants a Star Wars type of situation here. Uh, you know, uh, or maybe is that is that okay to say for like a comic um, Carl uh, uh, Shane Rick situation? Not exactly. It, it's close, but it just makes me think like him telling her that he's his father just makes me think of like um, Star Wars for some reason. Not that she she actually might not remember right because she was so young when Rick was actually there that she wouldn't uh, she wouldn't be able to say it. But I would absolutely hate that ending, Jeremy. 
because uh, then Negan dies and Rick dies and nobody really wins. So I, <laughs> I don't like that one uh, at all, man. Uh, Landon had said, uh, you're saying this as if they will actually manage to get a first movie done. Uh, I have a bad feeling something uh, is going wrong and is supposed to be filming by now. Well, you know, they never really said officially when it was supposed to start filming uh, or anything like that, I don't think. You can watch back what's, what Scott Kibble had said on Talking Dead and the different announcements and interviews he said and things like that. You know, I, I don't I don't know if they really said, you know, like exactly when it was supposed to start. I think that's mostly kind of us speculating when we thought it would. Like if you're going to release it 2021, then you film it in 2020 and you have it ready for 2021. So I guess uh, I guess when he announced that it was going to be a trilogy and everything like that, we just all assumed that we would see Rick back in a couple of years and it wouldn't take more like maybe three years or something like that, uh, that long. Because remember, they announced that in the first half of season nine, so it's over a year later now, and they haven't started yet. So then maybe if they start later this year, we can see it next year. So that's what I'm hoping for. But um, you might be right, but I, I wouldn't worry uh, about it just yet. I mean, I think, I think it'll be fine. I think they'll get it done. And uh, I think that Andrew Lincoln will want to do it because uh, I think that people get bored faster than they think. I think that when people have an opportunity to, to have leisure, they take it. Uh, but then after, you know, highly conscientious people, they get really bored and uh, they want to work. They want to do stuff. And if they don't, they feel guilt and they feel anxious. And that's what happens is when, you're, when, you, when you have a conscientious level that's too high, let's say it's 90 or 100, like wanting to, that just means wanting to work and wanting to do things and you, only, and you work a lot less. Then you start getting anxious and you start getting uh, you start feeling guilty because you're not working so much. So I think that, uh, you know, based on his work on Walking Dead, not that I know him personally or anything, but over the years, it sounds like he was kind of a workaholic and everything. So it's going to be difficult for him to walk away from that entirely and just do nothing. You know, doing nothing doesn't always make people happy. You know, you got to keep doing things and you got to you got to have fun and enjoy yourself. And, uh, you know, you can't just you can't just do nothing forever. It, it gets old very, very fast. Right. So. Um, I think he's going to want to do it, and I think I think he must know how much love there is out there for him, uh, for Walking Dead, because you think that he'd have to know by now, you know, how people look to him as like a leader for Walking Dead, like he's he's like the Walking Dead leader. You you want to say you, you say Norman Reedus, Daryl as well, but you, you can't you know not consider Rick as like your forefront leader for all of Walking Dead property. So uh, yeah, I think uh, I think we'll be okay. And I don't want to doom and gloom it yet and say, well, it's not even going to get done or anything like that, whatever. Yeah, I think it will. And uh, if it doesn't, I'll be very, I would be extremely surprised. I would expect them to want to do it because it affects all the properties they have. And it's the biggest property AMC has ever had. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so that's what I'm thinking right now. Anyway, that'll be it for, uh, for today's video, guys. I'll see you back again soon. If you like the video, please thumb it up below. You can share, you can favorite, and subscribe at the bottom left if you're new. That's it for this one. See you guys again soon for another. It's Trev, and I'm saying peace. Later, guys. See you soon.